if you can hear both of us properly. We're doing a bit of an impromptu Zoom do not work. So we're going live on my phone. <laughs> um, so just give me a thumbs up or some love hearts so I can see that you can hear me and then um, we'll get going. <laughs> Good times. It's about being creative. Being that is creative. totally what it's about. Yeah, and being... I guess because you can't plan anything. The thing is, there is no plan because everything is just... Even though it doesn't feel like something is ch changing right in this moment because it feels like, hey, I'm in isolation for three weeks or whatever. But there is no, you can't plan anything like for the future because it's unforeseeable. It's always is, but now I feel it's, we have to be more aware of it or we are invited to be more aware of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's the thing at the moment. It's like behavioral flexibility and being able to adapt in a time where, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen on a continuous basis. So it's day by day, I know. moment by moment. <laughs> it's like this huge psychological experiment, basically. Huge. So, all right. Awesome. So thank you everyone for joining us. This is my beautiful friend, Fihu. <laughs> And um, yeah, she's put aside some time today to come into the group so that we can have some freestyle chat. Also to talk heaps on um, female pleasure, self-love, care, and uh, the magic words of female ejaculation. <laughs> That's my cue. The boss woman, boss woman unleashed clients um, that I would definitely talk a little bit about my experience at one of your workshops. Um, so that will come as well and yeah, anything and everything. So if you guys have a, um, any questions whatsoever that you would like to ask, please, um, put them in the comments below. Um, there is, uh, what's the same? No, everything's off the table or there is, you know, there's no limits. There's no limits. to yeah, There's no limit. Uh, like there's whatever you want to ask, like, just shoot, like, um, yeah. Yeah, so um, I guess first things first, um, I'd really love to ask you, obviously I know bits and pieces of what you do, but you've also been doing a lot of studies since I spoke with you last. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what you do, like how you work with people and what it is that you're about? Sure, thank you. Um, well, so as you mentioned already that um, there have been some shifts and changes and that's true because um, I used to work just simply as like a coach more or less. Um, and what changed is that I started to study core energetics, which is um, body oriented psychotherapy. And I also started to study course um, to, yeah, for couples counseling and sexuality therapy to be able to go even deeper um, with the people I work with. And the great thing is that like, especially with core energetics that, I already worked with kind of, let's say, the tools that Core Energetic is implementing, um, working on the physical level, on the emotional level, the mental level, and um, also the emotional level, rather than just working on one or the other. Um, yeah. So the shift that basically happened is that I feel that um, I have a strong, even stronger fundament um, and what I'm doing. So I actually changed also yesterday, I changed my description because it felt like it didn't fit anymore from being a sex positive educator and a sexuality and sensuality mentor and life and intimacy coach. I changed it to somatic coach um, and specialist for process work and uh, sexuality um, to actually to reflect the shifts and the changes in the work. Um, what didn't change is um, that I work a lot one-on-one -on -one with people in private sessions and sometimes they take one-off sessions like on female ejaculation or just they have some something else going on and then we just do a session and I also have people who work with me from two to 12 months um, and we meet fortnightly um, and I support them um, basically I, I don't like the word I'm healing them or I'm helping them. I feel like I'm more a supporter of, um, of the human being 
Um, and rather than showing people, oh, that's your way, I'm like, I'm standing behind them, supporting them to find um, their own and to find themselves. Yeah, um, and that also through pleasure and um, sexuality. Yeah, and I just want to, I actually just want to quickly touch on that, you know, because um, I, ha I have this conversation often um, with many coaches, especially those who work on deeper levels around helping clients, because really, we're not actually really doing the work for them. Yeah, no. Actually guiding, yeah, we're guiding them and supporting them. And I love the way that you said that because, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Yes. Yeah? So it's like you can give somebody all the tools or the resources that they need. It's about teaching people how they can utilize them for themselves so that they then they can help themselves and us as coaches being supporters like guiding and holding space for our clients as they make those shifts. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I believe that everyone is like, let's put it that way. Maybe they, they in the core, they, they are already a oh, whole, there's nothing, nothing broken or something like there's just so much clutter like that is basically um, covering up the true core because like we all have this kind of like, um, this idealized self that we we have to fit this and this idealized self is created by us and by society and people try to fit it and because they are orienting themselves after this idealized self they don't really know who they are if they don't follow this like image so there's so much clutter that I've I probably feel more that I'm supporting people and actually becoming conscious about the clutter like seeing what is actually cluttering their true um authentic um version of themselves yeah and i guess um you know that's a big 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 thing as to why i you know still work with coaches and do all the self development is because you i mean my whole life like i never felt like i fitted in i was always a little bit left of center you know, searching for answers that I didn't realize that those answers were inside of me until I started actually doing the work on myself, realizing that, yeah, like I am me and it is okay to be me. And it wasn't until I started diving deeper. And part of that work was when I worked with you, um, when we work privately is actually about like full acceptance of self, whether it be good, bad, ugly, magnificent, like all of those parts, but what you're what you were saying around like you know how we're conditioned to for it to be or our ideal self of what we should look like or how it should be, I mean, you know, there's so much of that out there that people like like you said the clutter. It's about like decluttering, like decluttering self, and you know, finding a space where you can be supported to be the best version of yourself rather than taking on, you know, ex the external perception of what you should be like or should, how you should be or how you should act or how you should, 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 should. It's like the worst yeah. word in the world, right? <laughs> yeah. When I, what I'd like to clarify about decluttering, it's not about getting rid of the things that you don't like about yourself. It's actually starting to get to know yourself and like integrating these parts because we can't put them away. We all, we are fucking human. Humans are messy and we are not made to be perfect. Perfect in the sense yeah. that we think perfect has to be, but we all have like, nasty sides and things that we don't like so much and they become even worse by wanting to try to put them away rather to look at them because even like even negative energy is in the end energy if we get to the core if we can take the negativity out of it then we actually can harness the energy like the life affirming life force energy and can use it and channel it into like creativity and feeling more alive um yeah. if that makes sense yeah, definitely. And the image that I'm kind of getting in my mind, like when I think about what I worked um, with you through, which a lot of that for everybody who's watching, I work pretty deeply with Fihu around anger. It was something that I never learned to really express healthily. 
and um, you know, it would come up and I would try and push it down and it would come up and I would try and push it down. Um, and I would just try to be happy all the time <laughs> and not acknowledge when I was feeling angry or upset or whatever. And when you talk about decluttering, I kind of feel like, um, you know, if I had a messy house and there was heaps of dust on it and I just, even the angry parts, like if I just went around and like, you know, just sort of dusted it off so I could see it clearer and then I could understand it some more, be accepting of it some more. And, you know, eventually that house that feels so messy and so dusty, it's still got all the elements in it. It's just tidied up a little bit better because there's so much more acceptance rather than rejection. Yeah, it's like rather than throwing it all on a pile right into the center of one room, like taking it out of all the other rooms and just putting it in this one room, you know, like this huge pile of it, closing the door probably, and then be in the other rooms and be like, it's not like, it's not cluttered in here, you know, <laughs> but like in the end, it's basically going into that room where you put all the clutter onto the pile and actually look at what's, and there are definitely parts in the clutter that are not yours that you definitely it's like you know putting it away um putting it outside or giving it back to the person that belongs to or whatever but um to to look at the parts and to actually find out okay what's mine what's not mine like and taking full responsibility and ownership of your behaviors and all these kind of things because that's the only way through it like um denial will not get you anywhere it will just make um the let's call it suffering um, or unhappiness worse. Um, so yeah, it's basically decluttering and then taking the things and like putting them into, um, into, into the places where they want to be, you know, and then you can start to actually decorate a beautiful home. And maybe you also start to see how many beautiful things are actually all piled in the clutter. Because the thing is, if you put all your shit into the clutter pile, you can't, you can't just put the shit there and not put the good things in there. So as, as soon as you put the shit into the clutter pile, you will also bury your beautiful stuff with it. Um, so you might still feel like happiness and joy, but there would be even more joy if you would not just try to block the shit out because trying to not get hurt, for example, like putting up a wall, that wall will also keep some of the beautiful experiences out. Yeah. Like it's not possible to just filter like one or the other because it's all there. It's not, it's not this or that it's, there is an end like, and in terms of like, it's both there. It's not like just black and white. It's not like cake or cookies. There is, there is this huge feel where it's, it's like cake and cookies. Yeah. Like and black I like and cake. white and gray. Like cake and cookies. <laughs> yes. Who <it> doesn't, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and one th that's one thing, you know, even for myself and a lot of my clients start realizing that the more work you do, the more joy and happiness you experience. Even if it is a little bit painful for you to work through it, especially if you are not used to working through it or you haven't done this kind of work before. Like it's all new, it's all a little bit foreign. Um, and you know, it's about, I believe too, is like going at your own pace as well, inviting it in, testing the waters, stepping a bit more in and then a bit more and then a bit more. And you start to build up like build, you know, like building up your muscle. It's like building up your muscle. Building your muscle and learning something new. Like a lot yeah. of times, and let me tell you this, like even though I do this work, it's like I still get support myself. Like for example, um, part of the studies that I'm doing like entails like um, that I go and take therapy sessions myself. And even though I have like, maybe more tools than someone else i also have less tools than someone else but like it doesn't matter where you are on this path of development um there's still stuff there's always a deeper version so like even though i might have tools and like especially in these crazy times like it's not that i'm sitting here and that it like that it's a cakewalk for me like that it's something that is super simple and i'm just like smiling through it all it's like 
happy day every day, I'm enlightened, whatever. Holy shit, fuck no. It's like most of these days, like I, they're emotions from like all the way, from the highest highs to the lowest lows, from like having like a great hour and laughing and smiling and the next hour lying curled up on the floor and crying and being like, oh my God. Um, yeah. And acknowledging that even though I worked on myself since I'm like 14, um, coming to a point now where it's like, oh my gosh, there's still things like there are things that I actually never really learned when it comes to on some level um, of emotions or something. That's the thing. Like our society is so focused on growing physically and growing mentally. And a lot of times we forget to actually also evolve and grow emotionally. So that's when we are triggered and we get into our childlike parts. <laughs> um, then that's the place that's acting from because we act like a seven year old or three year old or whatever on an emotional basis because we didn't evolve our emotions in that sense that we are fully able like i mean it's always these mixtures as i said before it's not just black and white you know there's so many different layers but um yeah it's like it's definitely going your own pace and sometimes it's slow and there are times where it's harder um but even though when you have tools like it's not that it becomes easy. it's always really being really honest to yourself like taking a really close look in the mirror which can be really hard because sometimes you really don't like what you see yeah. um or if others are pointing out things that you actually don't like about yourself then it's hard to actually sit there and be like oh my gosh this is true like I had to acknowledge that I can be quite an ice princess of like being, ah, oh, I know it anyway. It's like, I know what you're thinking and blah, blah. Um, and first I was like, no, I'm no, not, that's not me. No, no. And then actually by not just understanding it with my mind, but I guess the most is shifting when you also feel it, like not just on an emotional level and energetic level, but to actually when you can feel it in your body rather than just understanding it from a mental point of view. Um, and then I, I actually, I started to feel it and I was like, yes, when I feel insecure and vulnerable, I can become an ice princess to protect myself. Yeah. that's something I learned now I discovered it now I can change it but just because it came into consciousness but yeah it's um it's an interesting journey for everyone who starts the journey to to or towards themselves to the core yeah and you can definitely um, like so ways that um and something that like I walk through my clients um through as well is about like really tuning into your own body and how that feels for you because, and um, not last week, the week before I did another interview with a, my NLP um, coach educator, and we were talking about like triggers and, you know, if we didn't believe, if there wasn't an element of truth to something that triggered us, it really wouldn't bother us in the first place. So if somebody, you know, for example, if we used your example, which is around being an ice queen, like if you, if there wasn't an element of truth in that, it wouldn't have had the effect that it had on you. And I think this is something that, um, you know, anyone who watches can take away from and immediately start helping themselves with this to really pay attention to how it feels. So when somebody does, you know, whether it be someone or whether it be whatever you're saying to yourself in your head, your self-talk, which might be around, oh, like, you know, ice queen or, you know, I definitely know one of my old school go-tos was like, you're not good enough. So, you know, if somebody had said something that made me feel like I wasn't good enough, like it would trigger it inside of me. And then I, but it would feel, I would feel it. And other ways that I would feel is I like, I would feel tired or it would feel heavy and I would just want to like curl up in a ball. Well, your is issues are stored in your tissues. Yes. It's like whatever happened to you at whatever time in history and that like mostly um, when like development psychology when you were really young, um, 
it's stored in your body. If you can see it in people, even sometimes when you study like um, the bodies of people, you can see it. And sometimes it's even telling you when it might ha have happened that like um, an event or a trauma happened. Yeah. Um, and your body is such a good indicator for things. Like it's, it's always being like, hey, if you do something like I was writing yesterday, um, about something and I started to get so sick like I could really feel in my belly and I was like okay there's something there I'm not sure what it is yet but there's something out of alignment maybe or whatever so I had to take a close look at it but as you said as well when being triggered or whatever like your body is um is magic in that way like your body is telling you a lot that's why I always invite people when I start a session it's like I always invite them to actually get into their body first and to actually when something is coming up I always ask where they feel it in their body what kind of reaction is it um, bringing up and um, also then to of course give exercises or do exercises with them to actually release because it's like in the end it's like wherever you feel it in whatever way it means there's like it's like stuck energy basically and like we want to loosen up that energy so that it actually can flow out the stuff that you like the overload of energy can flow out basically or activating parts of your body where there's a low amount of energy in there um and i guess that's where like um talking or what we talked about in the beginning like self-pleasure self-care and all these things female ejaculation whatever like um it's also body it's like it's bringing you into the body um which i feel is really important for us anyway like a lot of time these days like when i get really confused with the whole situation or whatever what i'm doing is like i'm here like when I'm here, everyone else is here as well, but also like to touch my body or to be like, I go into movement, um, either into, you know, self-pleasure or, um, yogic movement, dance, like there's so many ways of moving, but whenever I feel like, oh, there's something like, oh, feeling yucky or weird, or I can't make something out of it, like going into the body, because as soon as you land back in your body, you're also, um, let's say the doors to your feelings and to actually feeling are like they open up and then it's easier to actually feel where you at, what you're feeling, what is true right now. Um, yeah. Awesome. So on that note, before we jump into some more juicy stuff, um, like how did you get into this work? Like what, put you like what put you on this path like what inspired you to like get involved in um like down the sexual realm like down the female ejaculation realm like what got you interested in this or what's your story or how did that come about well I guess I got inspired by my own story and by how things changed when I started to actually get to know myself on these levels better um, I guess it's like my, as I said before, like when I was 14, I, I already like, I was always a searcher for a deeper version of the truth. You know, I was 14, I wasn't happy, but I also felt like I can't rely on the people around me um, because they have too much stuff going on. So I always felt like I was on my own in this like um so then i started reading about religion and all these kind of things because i was looking for answers and i knew for some reason i knew i'm the only person who I, who can make myself happy um so i started searching and then it was basically a long journey like i don't want to go into all the details of like 14 till now but i guess a big shift happened when i actually I mean, it's so hard because like it's it's this ongoing journey. I, I don't feel that there have been particular moments where I can pinpoint it on and be like, that was a turning point. I mean, it was a turning point, but the, all the other things led up to it. And then all the other things from there led up to, to the next thing. So I find it quite hard. It's not that one day I was sitting there having this huge epiphany um, or being struck by lightning, whatever, being like, oh yeah, this is what I want to do. But I acknowledged um, that at least through the journey of sexuality, and I guess that happened while I was living in Africa and I wasn't really, there were not really 
um, people that I was vibing with in terms of, oh, I want to get like intimate with them. Before that, I lived in Australia um, and met incredible people and I felt they were quite free and I felt more free. I guess moving, moving away from living in Germany, moving abroad, um, and that's something that's coming up these days again as well, being in touch more with uh, people from Australia again. Um, that I felt more liberated and free. I felt like a more truer version to myself than I felt why I was in, in, in Germany before. So that kind of freed me up that put like some of the clutter maybe was put away or um, wasn't really that tangible. So I felt more free. And then while living in Africa, um, I started kind of like, I started this online dating a bit because there was no one in the area that I was keen on. And then um, I was reading a couple of books on sexuality. Um, and I started to just open up a bit more, um, doing things that I didn't do before, that I was too scared or um, didn't love myself enough in that area. And then through basically putting myself out there in a certain way, um, started to shift things and through that i actually became more aware that um how liberating um conscious sexuality can actually be and how healing and how how natural it is and how um taboo it still is in society like it's all um recreational you know it's like in school you learn how to you know yeah sure how to protect yourself but also like you learn how to not get babies and how to get babies basically but yeah the whole pleasure the whole pleasure very, play very black and white exactly exactly so it's like and and it's like it's either that or that yeah but what's with all the juicy wonderful stuff that like in between and that's also possible like that's not just goal oriented, that you do it for the pleasure, not because you want to get somewhere. Yeah. Um, what else? And I, oh, sorry, can you? No, I guess I just, the sentence would have been finished. It would just, I guess that's when it started and that when it shifted. And that's when I acknowledge actually that also through, like, I'm not just teaching from a textbook, like, or I'm not just supporting people by a textbook. Like, it's because. I went through so much myself and I worked through so many things. It's like, it's, it's, it's like firsthand experience. It's like experiencing things physically and through that being able to deliver, I guess, differently than someone who maybe just studied um, psychology, but never really worked on themselves. Um, and I guess that's a different, but, and that's, I guess, how I got into this whole sexuality. Yeah. Um, and what i and what like in so obviously like when i first met you and i seen yeah. that you were running a female ejaculation workshop and i want i want to go there I, I have this conversation so much with so many um women and um it's always behind closed doors that i have these conversations because it's not a um a i don't want to do it on my uh, Facebook profile because I get a couple of creeps going on there but I always have them in intimate um, conversations with women but it's always I guess a bit more behind closed doors like I get a lot of private messages especially after I did the workshop inquiring asking questions what was that about and I know for my own self and my own um, personal reaction when I seen it first I was like oh my god what what did i just read oh my god wow okay and then you know immediately like you know prior to working with you like i'd always been a woman who watched like a fair bit of porn so i'd always watch a bit of porn so like immediately my head had gone to oh female ejaculation squirting that would be cool like that would be really cool i want to learn how to do that but i felt I almost like, I was like, do I, don't I, do I, don't I? And I sat, I remember I sat on it for your first workshop and then the date passed and I was like, damn, I should have freaking done it. Like, I really wanted to do it. Why didn't I do it? And I sat with that for a while and explored that myself because it was like, why, why are you feeling like you didn't want to do it? Like, what was it about that? And then you put up your next workshop and I was like, <laughs> yes there and I remember having this conversation with you um 
which quickly turned into tears for me <laughs> because I was just like, wow, like it is not even about that. And it is about so much more. And I remember having that conversation. I've got goosebumps, actually. Like, yeah, I, I feel like I'm tearing up. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I remember having that conversation with you. And it was like, it, I knew what you were talking about. But it was like this world that I almost didn't know existed. But it was a world I feel like I'd been looking for for a really long time. And, um yeah, like going to your workshop, like going through all of the process, like, you know, the steps or the way, the method that you run. Um, like I never felt more safe, more in, like invited, like um, more safe, connected, invited, like into a group of women in such a space, talking about such a thing. Like it was one of the most transformational things I've ever done in my life, not only for my own self, but like emotionally, sexually. And I always thought I was a pretty out there sexual person. Like, and then this, like your workshop just opened me up so much more than I thought was possible. And in the end, it wasn't about the female ejaculation. It was actually about the relationship I built with myself through the self-pleasure that I'd learned in your workshop and from working with you. And, um, yeah, like it's, I guess I just wanted to get this topic going just a little bit so you could talk maybe a bit about female ejaculation, um, what that's about, like from your perspective and what got you into like running those workshops <laughs> thank you for all your words like um it, it always makes me so so humble um and always touching to see and i mean i know how kind of it changed my life but then also to of course see um how much it's touching um other people just makes me really humble and really um grateful and um, you said one sentence, I tried to get it back together um, that I'd love to, oh yeah, because you said like, oh, you always felt like you were sexually quite out there, you know? Um, and I guess that's what female ejaculation is not about. It's not something that's totally out there. It's not something that's yeah. freaky or it's not something that is totally kinky or that, you know, it's like, um, a weird position that you try or something like it's not out there it's like it's not something I mean what it is it's natural and I guess that's what's coming down to it and that's what makes me emotional and that's what I'm teaching about it is rather than seeing it as something like um crazy or acrobatic or whatever to actually come back to what it really is that it's something natural and I guess that it's what it's about for me and what got me into it as well was that I felt when I first got in touch with when I first ejaculated um, myself which was in 2016 basically um I was really surprised and I guess also before a long time before like um you know, and I grew up with, with pornography, um, and that kind of like totally messed up my mind, um, because I was, I was too young, like I was 11, like, and it did something to me. Like I got a perspective of like, I felt this is how it has to be, you know, like you have a certain camera perspective from the guy's view. Um, and women are always wet are always hot are having a, a certain body shape um a certain vulgar shape and um who are also like orgasm like having orgasms like someone pushing a button um there doesn't need to be any foreplay just like going right in there and you know so yeah. i always thought like i was broken because i wasn't functioning like someone in porn and i like really consciously say functioning because this is what's happening it's just like it's it has little to do with like reality like 
of course there's like hardcore banging and all these kind of things and that can can be part of it it's nice it's like and also there it's not just one or the other it's not just hardcore porn fucking and flower love vanilla sex or whatever like there's so much in between what people like but so I felt like something was wrong and then female ejaculation I feel like just started to be on um in people's awareness like way later like for me it just came up probably around like maybe 2015 14 15 or something then it started a bit to get into consciousness um for me at least um and then having the experience of ejaculating myself um and it was actually it was quite a great experience and then I experienced a couple of times after, and then I got to the point actually where I started to explore with myself. And um, it's again, it's not one or the other. It's like, to, it's different experiences to ejaculate with yourself or to ejaculate with a partner. It's like a different mindset. Like when you ejaculate with yourself, I feel it's surrendering, but at the same time you are the doer. So it's like also being in a kind of like a bit of a maybe masculine energy. Yeah. um or more it's like okay in a, in a work mode kind of thing or whatever um and when you ejaculate with someone else um and i mean it can have different qualities sometimes it's just also like really soft and sudden when i'm on my own it just i feel um ejaculating with someone else has a different quality to it as well um in terms of being all of me and I guess that's what female ejaculation is about for me as well it's like being all of me like okay. I stopped feeling broken in that area I was like oh so it's not just like you know something special or out there or whatever um and to allow myself to be all of me and to um all my body fluids and whatever. And so then when you share that with someone who is actually also embracing that, um, it's, it's just this invitation to be all of you with even things that are maybe considered like dirty or um, unnatural or whatever, like because of all these taboos also around period blood or pee, for example. I mean, if it, pee is not like something... Um, that's like disgusting or whatever. I mean, it's not that I like do pee play with people, um, but at the same time, it's also nothing that it's like, it doesn't need to freak someone out. And the same with female ejaculation, which a lot of people don't even know that it's not pee, um, but it's, it's just, it's natural. And it's basically inviting to, to be all of you with, with all that you are. Well, I, um, I definitely can um, tell you that I've more than explored like with Hendrix, by myself, like I've had a lot of fun. Like my, like, um, I guess sexual play with myself um, and with Hendrix, like went to a complete different level. And like, I never felt so connected during the sex as what I did um, in that space. And it really had nothing to do with him and everything to do with me and me being present, um, like, exploring having fun like you know and I just remember and I guess you know in past like I've been a like control freak before and I can like you know before your workshop like there were times where it was you know I can see myself trying to even control the bedroom experience <laughs> as much as I would different areas of my life and that was you know that getting in touch with my body like the senses and the touching and the music and really being present in that moment like I feel like I've been on this learning how to be present journey I guess since you know before your workshop but like that definitely ramped up the level a whole heap after and it was interesting before you know when I said when I thought it was out there um, when I was saying that earlier and it's so the opposite because it's like in here you know and that was like an actual description <laughs> physical description of like Eliza before and then Eliza after and you know and then you start to realize like how sacred something like that is because you were present because you were there for yourself you were connected like 
it just, yeah, like it blew my mind. It still does now. And it's interesting. I can really feel the difference now between like connect, like when I'm connected and when I'm not. And like sexual pleasure was a huge part of that. Hmm. Yeah. I loved also how you said this thing of like controlling the bedroom or controlling yeah. something. And again, you know, it's like, female ejaculation is not out there it's in there female ejaculation is not about controlling female ejaculation is complete surrender like it's about letting go and not holding not holding back not holding yourself back not holding your fluids back um it's basically being like this is it. it's it's really like this this is all of me that's me that's like in in the most natural form um that's me yeah yeah very very like insanely amazing experience um and like what would you say for like the people watching that um like what are some things or like maybe some tips that you can give like my viewers or listeners and how to get in tune with themselves or like how to get into their body or something they could do to feel connected or feel some pleasure for themselves. Not necessarily um, like sexually because like as in touching their body, but um, I know something we, we did was like the music and I could feel it up my spine or even I remember dancing at your workshop, like, and there were all these women around me and you know, they're just like, and I remember watching you and I just thought you were the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And I knew that if I could see that in you, I could see that in me. And I remember the first song, I was like this awkward, like, I don't know. I just didn't know what to do. I was like looking around at people and I was like, just breathe, Eliza, just breathe. And the second song came and then I started like, you know, I started to move. And then by the time the third song came, like, I felt like I, I look like you, like, that's how that was. Like I fully just like let go, did my dance, like got in, you know, like sensual touching myself, like all of that. Like, and it was interesting that process with just the music, the first song was like this awkward robot. And then the third song was this, just like, I was in the moment. You surrendered to it. You surrendered. You were like, uh, uh, okay, you saw the other people. And it's like, oh my God. But like when your focus is outwards, you can't feel your body. Like when you, when people are like, um, when their minds are occupied with the shit or the good things or whatever with what other people do, rather than with like, how does it feel for me? Like, where am I right now? Um, you're not with yourself when you when your focus is outwards um so what i hear from you what you're saying is that first if your focus were on me it's like okay but you also acknowledge which is great that like when you can see beauty in someone else then like you have the same beauty within yourself um and then you're like okay breathe so you allowed yourself to be then then you you know you start to relax the other song you know, took you and then you started to surrender more to it and to, to actually let go and to get out of your head actually into your body into rather than thinking like, oh, okay, this, uh, I'm not sure or whatever. You started to get into actually what feels good, what feels good, not what my head thinks looks good, yeah. but like yeah. if I do this, like if I do, ooh, yeah, I do this because it, it looks good, right? then it's come like, that must be look like must look good then it's not the right thing but if i'm going into this and being like oh i'm actually moving this way because it sends up this tingly feeling down my spine then i'm into feeling like that's what happen happens for me a lot when i do my yoga practice in the morning actually i i could self pleasure after doing yoga every single time because like i feel the movement and i go in and get i get pleasure just out of being in the movement and just holding it and then being like oh there it actually feels really yummy and to 
even though someone on the screen is saying like, now you should do that movement. But when I'm in a movement or in a position that feels so amazing, I'm like, fuck you. I'm not moving into a different position. I'm staying here and I, I enjoy, enjoy the pleasure. So much often we feel pleasure at a certain point, but we feel we have to go on or life is moving on or whatever. But to actually, when you encounter a moment where you feel pleasure to actually stay with that. And I feel like it's hard for people because we're not used to or taught to actually enjoy pleasure and to be happy and all these kind of things, but to stay in that moment where you actually feel pleasure. And that can be for me, sometimes it's just walking outside and then seeing a beautiful flower somewhere and I just stop or feeling the sun off my skin and then reminding myself, whatever, I will just stand here in the fucking middle of the street and I will just soak it up and I will stay here as long as there, there is pleasure in it. And at some point where it's not pleasure, but then I move, con I move consciously on. Yeah. Um, and I guess one thing that's, one thing that's always like, it's, it's you, your body is your senses and to focus on your senses, because when you focus on your senses, like, um, you can't focus on, on much else. Like it brings you back to yourself and sensual senses. Yes. Senses, sensual, you know, um, but it doesn't need to necessarily be sexual. And then on the other hand, it's like, it's all the same. Basically it's again, it's not black and white. It starts to merge. Um, you can, for example, go and get yourself a pomegranate and then just like, just, take the seeds out and just like let the fluid like just run over your body or try to try to eat a fig like you imagine to eat a pussy for example like to just take things slow to feel things like what does it actually like the ground just if whoever is watching like to just actually put your hand down where you are and to actually consciously really feel what's happening i'm sitting here right now for example and i'm putting my hand on the ground and just to to feel this connection just gives me pleasure to actually, if I'm really fully present, then it's like, Ooh, that actually feels good. Also because it gives me nice stretch in the back and I can feel that and it feels yummy or, um, drinking water and maybe not, you know, making a mess, let it like drip down or smells like go through your garden, maybe barefoot. If you don't have a garden, um, go through your apartment maybe smell things that you normally wouldn't smell especially with food like cooking um when you cook to take the time to actually touch the vegetables to connect to it and then maybe you taste it in a raw like if it's possible to taste it raw then try it raw before you cook it maybe before you always had it cooked um and to just i guess get into these different senses or take a bath and like have the smell and it, it doesn't sensuality does not always have to come from like touching yourself um sexually like i can get pleasure out of just leaning against the tree and just con consciously being in that moment and actually feeling the tree behind me but um yeah so like what what i always or like i uh, did also a couple of workshops on that um last year at a couple of events um your senses about the senses where you like where you can also start smelling yourself it's like what do i smell like what does my pit smell like what does my hand smell like you know, like it can also give yourself a lick and um there's so many ways to to explore but um the senses are a really good way to come back into the present moment and to connect to the body or actually when moving like moving from the point of pleasure rather than moving from the point of uh what you had things it should look like and i guess that's maybe when you saw me dancing for example i was not like what it looked like i was just like mm -hmm. i felt like i was yeah, going you were, like, like, you were wild and i was <laughs> like i want to be wild <laughs> like <laughs> like that's you know that's that was almost like that's what i came for like to feel free like that represented free to me when yeah. i watched you dance like wild and free and then, you know, I walked out, walked out of that door, a whole different woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because like it, I didn't dance like to prove anything or to, um, 
to show you how it's done or whatever. I was just like, I guess it's also do, teaching or doing these workshops also every time again an invitation for myself to to let loose and to not care. Yeah, yeah. And that's it's such a lovely thing when we let when we're able to let loose and don't care. Because that's when this natural I feel our primal selves are actually our primal self gets space to come through yeah. and to just be. Yeah, this and that's so energetic, wild, um, really organic and natural way. Yeah, and that's um, it's really interesting, right? Because there's, I mean, obviously, like you know, I work with people mindset in like different different ways to you, and I definitely like you know, adopted some things that you taught me that I've passed on and like, um, I was like in my own flavor. It's really interesting. I'm constantly working with people who like, you know, care too much about what people think. They want to be free. They want to, you know, they don't want to be judged. They're fear. They've got fear of judgment. They have, um, you know, all these things that are actually, really keeping them small um that are really keeping them small and keeping them like in this cage that is the very thing that stops them from getting where they want to be but they don't really realize that that's what's happening like we sort of take this like approach where it's like oh you know um well if i just work on my fear and release my fear and then I, I do this and I do this and I do that, do, 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 do. And it's like, nah, it's backwards. Like you guys have got it backwards. Like, yes, you can remove the fear and you can do all these things, but that doesn't teach you to be, like it doesn't teach you to be present. It's just more things to do. So we feel like we've got to keep doing all this work when I find a lot of the time, like the answer is actually simply to be. That's true. But that's the thing, like to really be means also to be with yourself and to feel all of yourself. And when there are a lot of things that you don't like about yourself or when there are things that, um, you know, um, I'm, it's hard for people. And I guess that's why this time is at the moment is also so hard yeah. to people because they're all thrown back to themselves. They're confronted to being, to being with themselves also because they might not have heaps of stuff to do. Um, and I guess that's the yeah. hardest because when you don't know each other and then you actually acknowledge maybe even more, you don't, you don't fit the, the idealized image that you have. And I guess like, every single work that you do on yourself is is valid somehow and i tried many different things and they all like i all got a benefit out of it and there are phases where i haven't done any like um i mean i feel like constantly work on myself within myself but like i didn't always have like or um use um the support of um a coach or of like a healing technique or whatever um and that's the thing maybe it's also like viewing it differently like i mean it is hard work like to it's also not that you do a one time thing and you never have to do anything again like it's you have the responsibility for yourself for your whole life and not just for a month or a week or wherever. Yeah. Of course, you can also be like, okay, today I need a break. So I just binge watch whatever. I do that too. It's really healthy to actually take a conscious break of being like, whoa, this is really a lot. I need a break. Um, but it's this never ending. We are this, this piece of art that's never fully done. Um, there's always something to learn, but not in a way of like, oh, I need to do this, need to do this, need to do this. And like to also find pleasure in that, to actually find pleasure of like, whoa, something is shifting and something is changing because in the end, you're not doing it for anyone else except yourself. You're doing it for yourself because you acknowledge like, okay, it's, it's okay where I am, but I somehow have the feeling somewhere there is, there's more than okay. There is, I can feel that there is a great, or at least I have the hope or I want to believe there's a, there's a great and not just an okay. And great doesn't mean unhappy doesn't exist. Great means that like it can all exist at the same time. 
and I don't have to judge it in good or bad and I can just it can, it can all be there yeah yeah mm. I think you put that like perfectly like <laughs> absolutely perfectly that was so like beautifully said and also too about I used to be I used to be one of those people hands up pretty much I think everyone would and I know that the couple of people that are watching definitely have been um you know you work on something once and then it's like oh but I worked on that or I've done that work and we sort of you know coming from the fitness industry like the background you know you're always taught like do a eight week program do a 12 week program do a whatever kind of program and i know back in the day i used to run like four week programs and it's like what like four weeks is like scratching the surface on what is like possible for you to see or to learn or to understand and um you know i think it's just a bit of like and it might just be me coming from the fitness industry but you know everything sort of has a finish date on it and i don't remember anywhere um you know being taught or um that like it's a lifelong journey like it's a it wasn't until i worked with a fitness coach initially um that it was like this is for life like this is a habit for life like this is about a lifestyle this is about doing this for you lifelong and um you know when you work on yourself like it's so important to realize that yeah it is for life and it is you don't have to do it obviously every day all day um, but yeah it's an ongoing thing and when you realize that you can sort of like peel one layer back or maybe just you know dust one of the rooms off like we were talking about that it becomes more I don't know life becomes more beautiful and then you go and dust some more and then you experience more and you're open to more. There's more possibility, more opportunity. And you realize the more that, you know, you do a little bit of dusting ongoing, it's, you get so much more out of life than what you thought was possible beforehand. Exactly. And the thing is, you know, like, and I like the, the um, image with the dust that you just painted because it's not that you never have to dust again. Yeah. I guess just the quality, how you dust and to acknowledge quicker than it's dusty rather than sitting there so that the dust is piling up, piling up, piling up, piling up. Yeah. You actually like, oh, there's dust and you just, you, 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 you do it as you go. It's not anymore. It, it doesn't become like, oh no, I have to dust again. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm dusting. Um, maybe even finding, finding joy and, and um, energy. Um, in that in the in the dusting itself rather than just being uh there's this dust again because the thing is like it, dust will come back and i feel again important to um point out that whatever work you do and whatever program you did like it's taking layers off and like the, of course there are root causes but imagine that you have a pattern that pattern most likely and you might be 35 or 20 or 40 50 whatever but there are patterns that you repeat, for example. And when you've done that for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, like it will take some time to actually to rewrite the story. And as I said, I did so many different programs and they all were like, some of them were more better than others. Um, and they all did something for me. And I'm still, I'm sitting here and acknowledging, oh, there are a couple of things that I actually have learned before i feel like i'm getting to a level now that is deeper than the one before because i took the layers off so a lot of times it's not always possible immediately to go from here right all the way to center also because it's a never-ending story there's always a deeper version of everything even if you and think you got to the center there's more center to get to <laughs> exactly yeah yeah oh that's awesome so um 
Cool. And we might start to wrap it up because it's pretty much like we've been on here an hour. Yeah. We, and yeah. I feel like I could talk to you for another three, which this is oh, me, yeah, me too. So, um, given that we like did it via Zoom and like on the phone, maybe if we feel for it in a week, couple of weeks or something, maybe we might do another one. Um, or if someone would love to um, hear us talk again, like if we feel into it or if there's some question popping up and people think like, oh, they would love to actually have us uh, talk together again, um, they can, of course, also um, inquire um, us to do so. So definitely, like if you have questions, um, you can post them up now. So I'm like very proud of the way that we've like constructed tonight's meeting. So yeah, we we'll definitely, if we're up for it, we'll do another one, hundred um, percent, and make sure that the technical side is working. But I think we've done like, I think we've done really good. <laughs> yeah, and um, I also um, would actually love to say for it because not everyone might feel comfortable to ask um, like underneath the post or like more public. Um, and I just wanted to let you all know that I'm. Um, available for let's uh, call it maybe a, a complimentary call or whatever if you have any more questions um, about my work or would um, maybe even feel like oh actually I would like to explore a bit more then um, feel free to get in touch and um, I'd love to talk to you more and see um, where this can go mm. yeah definitely and I highly recommend um, I highly recommend any work with Fihu <laughs> so um, definitely, yeah, if the 20 minute call is something that you are interested in, I would definitely go for that. Um, yeah, she's obviously got limited spaces. So just get in on that pretty quick. And yeah, I wanted to thank you so much for jumping on and for like having this conversation for like everything that you've spoken about tonight. Um, yeah, I've had an absolute blast. <laughs> so I hope thank you, you so much for too. having me. Yeah. Really, I um, you love <laughs> um, and thank you so much for everyone that's watching. Um, there, yes. there will be a replay. I'm going to save it. Um, and yeah, just reach out to either me or Fihu if you have any questions or there's any thing that you want to know I don't know maybe you want to tell us about an experience or something about you um you can do so and we will see you very soon yes all right thanks again Bye. 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 stay on one sec oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, hold on I, just, I stop this hopefully it'll save my phone is like 45 degrees <laughs>